This is a Pele Media Podcast. Hello, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Goonies Minutes. This is the new addition to the Movies by Minute podcast family, where we're going to cover and overanalyze and break down the movie Goonies Minute by Minute. And I am your host, Brady, and normally I would be joined uh, by my co-host, Kyle, who's doing a few other of these shows with me, like Ghostbusters Minute, Jurassic Park Minute, but Kyle is not going to be involved with this show, so instead I have... My name is Chris, and I'm glad to be here. I've been a part of the Ghostbusters Minute and also the Ghostbusters 2 wrap-up show, and uh, glad to be a part of this minute and break down one of our favorite movies. That's right. I mean, this really is just one of the, um, you know, it's one of the great films of the 80s. I'd say it's one of the, the best, like, maybe kids' films of all times, but I think this is one of the best adventure film of all time. It's a great adventure film, and it's a very significant film to the 80s, but also, one of the things we'll get into is how, uh, yeah, it's a comedy, it's an adventure, but it also has uh, some little bit of love and also a little bit of uh, darkness to it of uh, yeah. a serious situation that's going on and how uh, kids deal with this serious situation and where you can look at it a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, on Ghostbusters Minute, one of our uh, bonus episodes, which we are going to be having some for Goonies Minute as well, um, we covered the movie Monster Squad. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, it's it echoes uh, the Goonies a lot. Our co-host for that made a good point. He said that he really enjoys movies where kids are put in dangerous situations and they have to get out of them through, like, kids' means. Like, they, they have to do stuff that only kids are going to be able to do to get out of it. And... Uh, and, you know, and that happens in a lot of movies, but in The Goonies, you're seeing a kid almost get his hand shoved down a blender. <laughs> yeah, we were watching this the other night, and we look at scenes, and we're laughing at it. We're laughing at this, and it, but if you think about it and what's really going on, there's a lot of serious stuff. Like, uh, for example, when Brand is uh, uh, trying to go find the kids at the, uh, the, re uh, the restaurant, and he's, he's got the, uh, the little uh, bike with uh, training wheels. Yeah. And Troy holds his hand down and then speeds off, yeah. and he goes off a cliff. I mean, that would be attempted murder. Yeah. And the fact that when the girls meet back up with him uh, later on, that's like, oh, I'm glad you're okay. I thought, you, I mean, this is like serious yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, that's serious, serious stuff. And I mean, he goes flying off the cliff, you know? But that's another thing I like so much about Goonies is its edginess. Um, this is, and again, that's something that carries over into to the movie Monster Squad, which we'll probably be coming back to a lot. It's It's so similar. It's the edginess that you don't see in kids' films anymore, and you're, you're seeing kids put in, in real danger, in real situations. You don't see that anymore, man, I think. Yeah, I know. I mean, and, and then a, a lot of the kid mo movies that you see today, does it make sense that some of them have turned into this new animation you know I, it, that, it, like, it could be. You know, it's like you don't see as many in general. You don't see as many. This is there's no sophistication compared to what it used to be. Correct. That's for sure. Correct. Um, I think in that might they're less memorable. Mm -hmm. so, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we could code the almost the entire film of Goonies from beginning to end, but I, I can't tell you nothing's coming to mind anymore. Maybe it's because I'm not a kid, but. I really think it's because nothing stands out. Uh, well, we're all anyway. kids at heart, right? Oh, that, that's <laughs> why we're doing a podcast about that's a right. kids' movie as grown men. But you know, you talk about the significance of it. Okay, uh, Cindy Lauper was big time. Okay, yeah, at this time, and the theme song of that movie was very Good popular, enough. and 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 MTV movie, MTV videos were very popular during this time. I mean, I can remember uh, the significance of this movie and the fact that when I first started making mixed CDs back in the 90s, all of my 80s tapes had, or 80s CDs, had... Good enough. Yeah, good song. enough yeah. in there. And used to love that song. Of course, fortunately in the movie, you don't hear one minute of, you know, intro music to it. So you actually That's start true, hearing yeah. it. It's like, and every time I would make my mix CD and it's like, oh man, I got to listen for a minute before I get to actual singing. <laughs> but it was always something when I ever heard that song, you go back to this movie, you go back to the good feeling of watching this movie mm -hmm. and being a kid and seeing these kids go through this adventure. And it was always a happy feeling, even though like we'll talk about later as we get minute by minute, there was a lot more going on than just happy and comedy. So again, we're going to save, you know, breaking down the movie minute by minute. We're going to do second zero through second 60 on our first uh, episode. But something that I know you really want to go into um, at the very beginning here is some, some cast information. And before uh, we get into that, I just want to say I really miss uh, movies where the actor's name would be playing over the picture of the actor, which we get sometimes. But uh, Yeah, it was really, it's, it's something that 
I don't. I, it, I bet you it happens a lot, and we don't even notice it. Mm-hmm. But boy, I wish uh, movies would do that more often and kind of really set yourself up for what you're going to see throughout the whole film. Mm-hmm. So, uh, who do you got? One of the things that I thought was interesting is it's uh, Josh Brolin's first movie. Yeah, you know, and he had a major role in a first movie. It's not like. You know, I don't know if he was in any, in any commercials or anything before then, but looking, it seems like this was his first ever acting performance. Yeah. And to have that major of a role and done that well in such a major hit movie, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, he kind of had a quiet uh, period in his career, but now he's back as like an Academy Award nominated actor. Yeah. He's in something, a couple things every year, but uh, keep going. Uh, also, uh, to, to the other uh, people involved... Uh, Ann Ramsey, who throw mama from the train person, also mama for telly. <laughs> yeah. Um, she ended up uh, dying um, in 1989. And then another one of the cast members, uh, Sloth, That's who right. was played by John Matuzak, he died in 19, uh, I think 90, 1988. He was 38 years old. Damn. He used to play football. And, uh, you know, of course, an interesting character. Everybody, one of the first things they think of when they think of Goonies is Sloth, that voice. Yeah. John, <laughs> baby, you know, actually, everybody's got you know uh, their own imitation of that, and they can picture that. And then the interesting part, speaking of Chunk, Jeff Cohen, uh, he of course he's lost a lot of weight. He's now a he's an, an entertainment lawyer. Right? Entertainment lawyer, and uh, he's he's sharp looking dude. You know, definitely nothing like uh, the first person. The person that was in that movie doing the truffle shuffle. (laughs) And then, of course, uh, the lovely uh, Corey Feldman as Mouth, who, you know, he's had an up and down career as a uh, child star, but then has had his tough times. Yeah. But a staple of the 80s. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just amazing, you know, thinking about these uh, these, this this cast. It really was a great cast. And of course, you know, Spielberg getting the, the writing credits. Yeah. You know, so but with Spielberg, he actually did direct a couple of the uh, a couple of the scenes in there. Of course, we'll get into that later. Yeah. on. And speaking of Spielberg, uh, I, I know this. You know, this is a Richard Donner film, but Spielberg, it's it's got his stamp all over it. And then Donner being the the uh, director, and then listening to other people that have worked with him uh, talk about is that he knows the right music or the right whatever uh, right music, right time. Uh, and there's no other music that could be played at that time that would be that perfect. A perfect the first example I think of is when they look at the map for the first time, yeah. and then there's that unique music, and that whenever they would see something for the first time that would reveal any information to them, and mm-hmm. it was it's it's like there's no other music that I could possibly think of that would be more perfect than that music. The music also has like such a. Um... It sounds like the music from one of the old pirate films, one of the old Errol Flynn films. So that's really cool that you're kind of getting the uh, the echoes of that pirate theming, um, although you're not completely aware of it. And you got that dun 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. It's just so appropriate. For uh, so appropriate. Yeah. Another thing that I think is interesting uh, that that gives this film that edge that kids films wouldn't normally have isn't just the Fratellis. They're not the the overall villain. Um, one of the the primary villains in this film is real estate. And it's right. uh, the foreclosure of these kids' entire world. The goondocks are going to be shutting down. And that's kind of what spurs on the entire uh, premise of the movie, is the fact that um, there's going to be this foreclosure over all this land. And that's so interesting that that is the primary threat in this children's movie. Right. And, like, you look at Mikey uh, with his brother right in the, one of the beginning scenes. On, on the uh, porch. You know, yeah. On the porch. And it's it's really uh, it's like and each of them deal with it a little bit of a different way. Mikey, I think, is seems like he is hit the most, mm-hmm. and I think that of course uh, goes into his relationship with One Eyed Willie, which is we'll get into later, which is very interesting. But you know, there's and there's a lot of things that are not uh, explained, but they don't necessarily need to be explained. That yeah. You know, of uh, you know why you act like they're going to be homeless if they foreclose. You know. And like they literally won't have a home, and then all the kids won't have a home. It's like, well, what's yeah. the story of all, all these other families? But right, right. you know, it, so it's it's interesting. But uh, you know, if you think about if you put yourself in a situation as a kid, where I know when I was watching as a, as a kid, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't putting myself in a situation, which is kind of interesting. It's like I didn't put myself in a situation as what if I lost my home. Right. I was more looking at it as the adventure yeah. and the comedy part of it and the fun part of it. Yet here we are as an adult, 
looking and that's at the first it thing in a notice. more mature way of thinking, man, these poor kids, what would happen here? Yeah. And that's, um, again, something I think Spielberg is so great about is including all age demographics. He's going to make sure everybody is going to have something to enjoy in this movie and everyone's going to have a, a different threat to feel. Um, now, I showed this movie to a friend of mine a few months ago and she had never seen The Goonies growing up, really wasn't aware of it at all. And we all had been seeing this since as long as we can remember. And so we see it as this fun adventure film and everything. And she was like, this is incredibly dark. And this is only like 10 minutes into the movie. And she's saying, why, why are you showing me this? There's nothing fun or adventurous about this at all. This is such a sad, sad movie. And it doesn't help that it takes place in like the, you know, gloomy, uh, you know, area that it does. It's actually in Oregon. Is I it was Oregon? Thinking, okay, you yeah. know, it's, it was actually in Oregon. Let's do so it's, it's. It's very, uh, it's cold, it's yeah, wet, it's gloomy. damp, yeah. you know, gloomy is a quick way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it, it's interesting because uh, like my, my girlfriend's only seen uh, bits and pieces of it. So, yeah. and that was when she was younger. So I'm going to be interested to see what yeah, another adult's take is on it who hasn't had any type of opinion shaped based upon seeing it as a kid. Yeah. Now, you know, I, I keep coming up with different Patreon, uh, and that is uh, bonus episodes as we go. And I think one of them would probably be to have someone who saw the film when they were younger and sees it on that level that we recognize right. it on, and then someone who's just now seeing it and is going to see it in a whole different light and try and figure out why this film still works for everyone of any age. Yeah, so. it definitely it definitely works for anyone of any age. And, and uh, you know, it's just interesting to watch uh, again, after not having seen it for a while and really uh, understanding the script more than you would as a kid. But it, it definitely yeah. works for any age and you can see it in different ways. And that's what's great about, uh, a, I would say, a, a Spielberg movie mm -hmm. yeah. is that uh, there's so many things involved there that are below the surface. Yeah, exactly. And here we are 31 years after the film's release. And we're still finding new stuff. Right. I mean, when, we when, watched it the other night. for the millionth time the other night, <laughs> and we, right. we caught things on there that we'll talk about during the minute that yeah. I've never seen before yeah. or never caught before. Do you have anything else you want to throw, throw in? I think that's pretty much it. Well, all right, great. I think that just about wraps us up. I'm going to go ahead and let everybody know where they can contact us. Uh, we are at GooniesMinute.com. We're also at GooniesMinute at gmail.com. Facebook.com slash Goonies Minute, Twitter.com slash Goonies Minute, and Instagram at Goonies Minute. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any ideas or questions or comments. We want the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because even if it's something that we don't hit during the minute, if it's something that needs to be delved into more when we have the wrap up yeah. at the end, uh, we can go into those things. Absolutely. Man, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. We're yeah. going to have a good time doing this, and we're going to get to uh, some some deepest, darkest levels of this <laughs> yeah. pirate ship and beyond. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, I tell you what. I'm Brady. I'm Chris. And remember, Goonies never say die. Goonies Minute is a fan-supported podcast. If you like the show, then leave us a review on iTunes. You can find us at GooniesMinute.com, Facebook.com slash GooniesMinute, Twitter.com slash GooniesMinute, and at Instagram at GooniesMinute. You can contact us at GooniesMinute at gmail.com. You've been listening to a Pele Media Podcast. For premium content and exclusive podcasts, visit us at Patreon.com slash Pele Media. Check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Pele Media, and follow us on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Pele Media.